Okay, so um, I posted uh, on some stuff on Google Classroom uh, just to share with you a little bit about what to expect in this course, um, some of the topics that we're going to be covering each week, uh, different things like that. So please do go through that. And it also has uh, guidelines for, for online students. Uh, so some information that will be useful for you. Um, if you can go into that section, the class notes section, and look through all of that, uh, that will help you get oriented to what all we are going to be looking at in this course. And then if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the classroom. Um, I'm not sure how much you all get to interact with each other since you are all online, uh, but I would really love to see that happen in this class. Um, I think there's a lot of learning that happens uh, when we interact with our peers in the classroom. And uh, so we don't want to miss out on that. Uh, I would like to learn from you all. And I think it'll be a good opportunity for each of us to learn from each other um, so that I'm not the only one speaking and teaching, uh, but we all get to share our insights, our learnings, uh, things that God is revealing to us as we are uh, looking at his word, uh, that we can share those things with one another. So please do use the Google Classroom uh, option to comment um, and just uh, share your learnings through the course in the classwork tab, okay? Um, okay, so I would really like to hear from each of you, maybe just share your name and what you do and where you're from. Um, I've also asked you all to post that on Google Classroom, but since no one has posted yet, I'd like to do that before we start today. So if you can just unmute and uh, tell me, I can see your name, but you can still say your name for everyone else to hear, and uh, what you do, and where you're from. Can you mute so that I can speak? Sounds very good, ma'am. Uh, this is Subhasis. Can you hear me? Yes, Subhasis, you can go ahead. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> my name is Subhasis Singh Ren. Actually, I'm from Patna, uh, so I think the laws. Okay, okay. And what do you do, Subhasis? I'm uh, with full time ministry, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, I think Jeffina was going to uh, introduce herself. I'm just going to introduce. I'm Jeffina. Uh, I'm from Tamil Nadu and just doing my third year here. And I have given my life for the Lord to do ministry for Him. <laughs> okay, I'm John. Um, I serve the Lord at APC Mangalore. I'm basically from Kerala. Thank you. Good morning, Mary. Myself. I'm just going. Um, okay, okay, I think, uh, okay, yeah, uh, Rosalind, you can go ahead then. I'm Rosalind from Mumbai, and uh, I serve in my law. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, good morning, ma'am. I'm Julie Tulliwatsa. I'm uh, from Kohima, but uh, I recently got married. And I'm with my husband in Pune. Okay. You're with your husband. Uh, you moved from Kohima? Yes, ma'am. I was working with APC Kohima. Okay. Uh, okay. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my name is... Enoch Sokfax Chukunibum. I'm from Nigeria. I'm a full time preacher. I'm an apostle by calling. Welcome to Nigeria. You go by success. Is your first name success? I'm from Nigeria. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm a full time preacher. I'm an apostle by calling. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Luvega Colin. 
I'm in Chigali, Rwanda, and I am a school principal. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning. My name is Albaka Jamil Adebisi from Nigeria. I'm a teacher and a pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Lyndon Philip Martin. I'm a native of Kerala, but I'm settled in Chennai. I'm a working professional and uh, want to be an evangelist, and uh, it's one of the reasons why I pursued this uh, theological course. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, my name is Anita, and I'm from Karwar. I'm working part time for my church office, and I'm I'm in a part time ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Manita. Okay, did uh, has everyone had a chance to introduce themselves? Well, I think I'm not able to get to all the participants, but yeah, so uh, please do go back and uh, post on Google Classroom as well. Um, because I've also asked you there, what are you looking forward to in this course? Or what are you looking forward to learning? Um, and so I'd love to hear from you um, more about that. So um, in Google Classroom, I've also shared with you a little bit about the assignments uh, that we're going to have. So they're gonna have, we're gonna have four different assignments and I'll give you more details about what each assignment will involve um, in the next few weeks, uh, but this is just uh, some information to get you ready. So we'll have um, an essay question uh, that we're going to be uh, having. We have a quiz, we'll have a personal reflection paper, and we have a final paper. Uh, so there are four assessments that we have that will contribute to your final grade. Um, I think what I've mentioned there is the release date, but it actually should be the due date. So I'll, I'll give you all the due dates for all of these uh, assignments that will also be posted on Google Classroom. Uh, so let me just also introduce myself. My name is Smitha Narona. Um, I serve with APC Bangalore uh, in a part-time position. So uh, I'm married to um, Manohar, who also serves with APC in his full time, and we have a two year old uh, daughter who uh, kind of keeps me busy full time. So I've opted for part time work at the moment. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, I, I'm so excited to be teaching. I was teaching before COVID uh, hit and then I took a break for a while, and now I'm back. Um, with the Bible College, so I'm still catching up with some of the online ways of teaching, but uh, I love teaching and I feel like uh, it's just a gift to be able to learn and share that learning with others. And so I'm looking forward to what we all learn together through this semester uh, from God's Word. So uh, let's just pray before we begin. Um, I'll open us in prayer and then we'll go into first Corinthians. Father, we thank you uh, so much, Lord, for the start of a new semester. We thank you for how faithfully you have carried each of these students through the last two years uh, that they have been studying. And um, even as we begin this course, Lord, we just pray, uh, Lord, that you would open our eyes and our hearts and our ears to hear from you. Uh, Lord, that we would receive revelation that can only come through your spirit, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, as we look at your word, um, that you yourself would be teaching uh, us, that you would enable us to uh, be able to encourage one another to pursue you and uh, to pursue a deeper intimacy, a deeper relationship with you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray your blessings over today's class. And each of us who are here, Lord, uh, we pray that we would receive all that you have to give to us. Uh, we pray for the blessings over every aspect of this class, Lord. Uh, let it be fully and wholly uh, yours uh, 
carefully and holy carrying your glory and your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So um, you all have a copy of the notes, right? Uh, it's posted again on the classroom. Uh, so we posted both the first and second Corinthians notes. Um, you can download it from there and um, use that. You can keep it open during the class if you don't find it distracting or if you find it distracting, you can just listen. Uh, so I will be sharing from the notes, but I also may add things apart from the notes. Uh, so feel free to take down your own personal notes while we are going through this book. So to begin with, we'll just uh, look at a little background of uh, Corinthians to understand what happened uh, in Corinth and why Paul actually wrote this letter. Uh, we'll understand a little bit about the city of Corinth, uh, what was the culture there, what was happening there spiritually, um, and a few things that will help us better understand Paul's writing in this episode. Uh, so the city of Corinth was established uh, in 44 BC. And uh, it was actually a colony where there were uh, people who had fought the war with Julius Caesar, then went and settled in Corinth. And it became a very important city. Uh, it became the capital of the province of Achaia, which is uh, basically most of Greece is called Achaia. Ancient Greece is called Achaia. And so um, Corinth became the capital of Achaia in 27 BC. And so there was a lot of work that happened after it became the capital. It was uh, built and made to look uh, look like a capital, right? It became a place where uh, people were coming in, merchants were coming in because it was also a port city. Um, and it also uh, became very developed, very urban uh, for that context. Uh, it was known for luxury. It was known for immorality and I was known for a place where um, pleasure, people who wanted to seek pleasure uh, went there uh, to uh, for whatever sense of pleasure they were looking at. And um, it was also known as a place of commercialized love. So uh, the, the term Corinthian girl would be used to refer to a prostitute. So uh, immorality uh, in terms of sexual practices was uh, very prevalent there. And so when uh, we see in the letter of uh, Corinthians where Paul is addressing some of that immorality, uh, it's not only within the church, it's actually something that was practiced in the culture that had then come into the church. Um, so this uh, city became so important because of where it was located geographically. So we will look at, uh, I'll just share with you a little map uh, that will show you where Corinth is. Um, so if you can, can you all see the map? Yeah. So you, you can see that little green dot um, which says Corinth and then you can see Athens on the other side. So there was a little piece of land that connected the larger, um, larger ancient Greece, uh, Greece to this other part, the southern part of Greece. And Corinth was right in between that important place connecting both these parts of Greece. And because it was also on the coast, a lot of merchants came in to sell and uh, a lot of the export and import happened through there. So there were lots of people coming in from other countries. Uh, there was a lot of influence of other religions in this place because of that exchange of cultures uh, and people coming in and going out. And so it was um, it was a place where um, a lot was happening all the time and a lot was changing and uh, a lot of activity. So the, the marketplace was buzzing with activity. Um, and so it's very strategic when Paul goes there to plant a church. It's a very strategic place because He's going to a place that is reaching a lot of people just because of where it is geographically located and also because of the kind of work that is happening there. 
so he goes and he goes right into the center of all of that activity, uh, going into the marketplace, right? Because he uh, serves as a tent maker. So he goes to the marketplace where all of that exchange of cultures and interaction is happening. Um, there, uh, in terms of religious, uh, religiously, what was happening? Uh, there were two gods that were mostly uh, worshipped in Coral, and that is Apollo and Aphrodite. So there were these two temples that were there. Um, so we see uh, why why that is important uh, is because we see some of the things that Paul will address later, uh, addressing some of those things uh, of worship with these gods. So Apollo was a Greek god and was associated with sun, with the light, with knowledge, with medicine, with music, with poetry, uh, with art, with oracles, archery, plague. So there were lots of specific things that Apollo was worshipped for. And the temple of Apollo was in the lower level of Corin. Um, so Corin uh, kind of had a higher level and a lower level. The higher level would be called the Acropolis, and the lower level would be uh, a lower part physically, closer to the water. So in this lower part was where the temple of Apollo was. And in the higher part, the Acropolis was the temple of Aphrodite, who was the Greek goddess of love. And um, it was in this place that there were a lot of temple prostitutes. So there were about 1,000 male and female temple prostitutes. Uh, and so you can understand, uh, because Aphrodite was known as the goddess of love, uh, prostitution was very closely connected with that temple. Um, and um, so when we see that worldliness, when we see uh, sexual sin in the church, it was some of that influence over the people who, were, who had come out of that worship into the church. So um, we next look at the marketplace. So Paul went in and he met with Aquila and Priscilla, and he uh, then started this tent making work with them. So that was they were basically working with leather, uh, making tents uh, and selling it in the marketplace. That was called the Agora, and uh, this was just a very very uh, central place to Corin because Corin was known for its business, uh, for it, for being an economic center. And so uh, to be there and to be able to interact with the people coming uh, coming into the marketplace was actually like right at the center of what the city was about. Uh, so it's a very, very strategic and a very influential place uh, for Paul to be. Um, we'll also see that that uh, being in the marketplace was viewed by some as being uh, something that was practiced by people of a lower status. So Paul, even in being there, is actually reaching out to a specific group of people. So uh, people of higher status would usually refer the philosophers, uh, the people who uh, would um, speak rhetorically, would be able to uh, present uh, their religious views philosophically, um, but Paul is going to the working class. So when he goes to the marketplace and he's a tent maker, uh, he's actually uh, reaching out to the working class rather than the elite, because the elite would not respect uh, that work as much, would not respect tent making or manual labor as much. Uh, their preference would be for the thinkers for the philosophers. Um, so let's just go to Acts and we look at when Paul arrived in Corinth and what happened when he arrived in Corinth. So we understand how the church was established. And then from there, we can look at uh, more about why Paul then wrote the letter to the church. So we we'll read from Acts 18, 1 to 17. Uh, is there somebody who would like to read those passages for us? Acts 18, 1 to 17. Acts 
Acts 18, 1 to 17. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately came come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Cletus had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean, and from henceforth I will go into the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined heart to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then speak the law to the Paul in the night by vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. And when Galileo was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made in insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuade the man to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Galileus said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked, lewdness, or ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Until 16, right? 17. 17. Then all the Greek took Sostens, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of these things. Can you? Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to connect the uh, speakers, uh, these headphones. Uh, it's see it work. Okay, you can hear me. Uh, let me just see if I can hear you, because that seemed to be the issue before. Um, if one of you can just speak, I'll... Yes, of course, we can hear. Okay, I still can't hear. I think it may be something to do with the settings. We do it. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, I just realized I had turned off my... Okay, the audio is better. Okay, can, can you just speak again? Sorry, let me just see if I can hear you. Ma'am, we hear you clearly. Oh, okay, and I can hear you now. Um, okay, I think this will be better even for the recording of the video. So um, we'll just use this. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with that. Uh, so, yes, we read uh, from Act 18 where uh where Paul went to uh, Corinth uh, first and the kind of work that he started and how the church was established. So this is just a background for us to understand when the church was established and what happened at that time. Um, we'll just go back to that chapter 
and look at a few things that happened. So um, we saw on the map that I shared where Athens was, right? It was on the other side of that little piece of land. Um, uh, Athens is on the other side. So Paul left Athens, went to Corinth, and he met Aquila and uh, Priscilla at that time. And Aquila and Priscilla had left home because uh, the emperor Claudius there had uh, asked all the Jews to leave. So because they had been asked to leave, they had arrived in Corinth and Paul had arrived in Corinth and they were all new there. They were all Jews. Um, so they connected and uh, they began to do the tent making work, the leather work together. And uh, he worked, he stayed with them and worked with them. And uh, so while he was in the marketplace during the week on the Sabbath, he would go to the synagogue and speak to the Jews and Greeks. Uh, Greeks and share about Jesus. Um, now, uh, when Silas and Timothy came, uh, they came uh, from Macedonia, and uh, Paul then spent most of his time uh, preaching to the Jews. But we see that a lot of the Jews didn't receive his message. While there were some Jews who received him, uh, there were many who rejected him. And so we see then Paul also going to the Gentiles. And uh, Paul stays in Corinth because of the encouragement he receives uh, through the Lord in a vision, telling him to continue his work there. And so he ends up staying in Corinth for a year and a half. He spends 18 months in Corinth in that initial phase, establishing the church there. Um, and uh, then we see, yeah, we see the, the controversy with the Jews about uh, what he's teaching, and they try to send him away. But um, but thankfully, those people are not supported by the uh, by the leader there, by Galileo, who was the proconsul of Achaia. So um, that's what happened in the establishing of Corinth. Um, and so that's how the church was established. And uh, that was about AD 51 is when Paul uh, was uh, traveling, doing his second missionary journey. This was part of the second missionary journey. And uh, all of this happened during that time. So we see while Paul was there, there were a few people that are mentioned in this passage in Acts 18. Um, and also later in uh, the book of Corinthians as well, in the letter of Corinthians, uh, where a few people are mentioned as people who responded to the gospel. So we see justice uh, is mentioned in Acts 18. Uh, Christus, who was the chief ruler of the synagogue, uh, and then the household of Stephanus, uh, who is, I think he's mentioned uh, in First Corinthians, was not here not mentioned here. And then uh, the ruler of the synagogue. So we see that in Acts 18, 17, um, that he's mentioned there. And also in 1 Corinthians 1, when Paul is writing the letter, he mentioned someone named Sostenes. So we think that is the same person. And um, then we also see Erastus, the treasurer of the city, uh, as someone who was saved. So we see some people of a higher status who responded to the gospel. Uh, but also, as we read Corinthians, it's quite clear that there were many people also from the lower class that uh, received the gospel. So we see uh, 1 Corinthians 1.26. Can someone just read that, please, Russ? First Corinthians one twenty. Where is the one twenty, right, ma'am? Uh, one twenty. Ma'am, your voice is not. One. Okay. One twenty six. Twenty six. Yes. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called yes so we see here paul is saying 
not many of you were influential. Not many of you were of global birth. So there were definitely some who were, but uh, it was uh, a few of them who were from a higher status. The others were more from a lower status, which means that Paul's work in the marketplace was quite effective, that he was able to reach a lot of people through that. So we see here that uh, the church was established. And as we read Corinthians, it's quite clear that they were a very spiritually vibrant church, that you could see the gifts of the spirit being exercised uh, and that uh, they were powerfully uh, empowered by God to uh, use these gifts uh, in their services, in uh, witnessing to others. Uh, so we'll see how um, how those gifts were being used and uh, what is the kind of teaching that Paul gives with regard to spiritual gifts and how it is to be used in the church. So as we come to the end of that uh, those first 17 verses in Act, uh, Act 18, we see that um, Paul then leaves Corinth and he goes uh, to Ephesus. And then somebody else named Apollos comes in. Uh, so if somebody can read from verse 18 to verse 28 of Acts 18, Acts 18, 18 to 28. And Paul, after this, tarried there yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence to Syria, and with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in um, Centuria, for, the, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus, and left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not, but but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that come in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. Till 21, ma'am. Uh, you can read till the end of the chapter. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order, strengthening all the disciples. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he, he spoke and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto, uh, unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace, for he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Okay, thank you so much. So we see here what happened after Paul left Corinth. Um, he spent one and a half years or 18 months in Corinth. Um, he reached out to a few people, a few people had responded uh, to the gospel, and then he moved on uh, and he left Syria and uh, then went to Ephesus. And while he was gone, there was someone named Apollo who came to Corinth. And um, 
Akula and Trisla have the opportunity to hear him. Now, uh, Apollo is known as somebody who, um, who was very learned and he knew the scriptures really well. And he spoke uh, with uh, a great impact. So there was a lot of power in his preaching. And also there was right teaching about Jesus. But the only problem was that he only knew until the baptism of John. So he didn't know uh, more about Jesus' death and resurrection. He didn't know about the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And these are the things about which uh, Priscilla and Aquila teach him and help him to understand uh, the full message of the gospel uh, so that he is then able to go and teach, uh, teach people accurately uh, what, uh, what is promised through the gospel, what is offered to them through the gospel. And uh, so when we read in this letter of Corinthians about Apollo, uh, it's important for us to understand uh, what is described about him, right? So he uh, was learned, he had a good knowledge of scripture, he was able to preach powerfully, um, and he um, was, uh, was going around teaching with great enthusiasm about uh, about Jesus. So all that he knew about Jesus, he was teaching with great enthusiasm. Um, and so we see the fruit of his work also being reflected in this letter uh, to the Corinthians. So um, after this, after Paul uh, leaves Ephesus to go to Jerusalem, and then we see that he begins his third missionary journey. And it is during his third missionary journey that he goes back to Ephesus and he spends about three years there. Um, so that is um, from AD 50 is when he begins his third missionary journey. And he spends about three years at Ephesus. And so um, it is while he was at Ephesus that he writes the uh, first letter that we have in the Bible to the Corinthians. So the first uh, Corinthians, that book is written while he's in Ephesus. So it's expected that he wrote it in those three years, uh, AD 53 to AD 55, sometime within that timeline. Uh, now, I think in your notes, it says AD 58. Please make that correction. It's AD 53 to 55 is when he uh, when he is expected to have written the letter uh, while he was in Ephesus. So uh, we look at a little bit of what we know from this letter. Now, this letter of 1 Corinthians actually was preceded by another letter. So there is a letter that was written before 1 Corinthians, but we do not have a copy of it. And therefore, it is not in the Bible. Uh, we don't have a copy of that original letter. But we do know that there was a letter written because in 1 Corinthians 5, 9, Paul refers to that letter. So he says, I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people. Uh, so he's referring to another letter that he had written before that, before 1 Corinthians. Uh, and we don't know much more about that letter, uh, but there are three things that we can understand from what Paul says in 1 Corinthians. Uh, we can understand that uh, the letter was dealing with this area of sexual immorality. Uh, we can understand uh, that uh, the letter was not taken very seriously based on what uh, Paul writes in First Corinthians. Um, and uh, that this was written after he left Corinth. So that first letter was written after he left Corinth, but before he writes First Corinthians. So there was one letter in between and then first Corinthians written based on uh, the church's response to what he had written in his first letter and based on some oral reports that he had got from the people in the church about what was going on there. Uh, so the letter is written about three years after the church was established. Uh, and we see uh, that Paul in these letters is addressing uh, some of the issues that had arisen in the church, uh, things that he felt were necessary to be addressed. So with all of that background, let's 
go into chapter one. Uh, is there anything y'all, um, any questions y'all have so far? Uh, anything y'all would like to share before we go into chapter one? Uh, it's not 58, it's 55, you mentioned 53. Uh, could you yes. come that year again? Yes, uh, between 53 to 55 AD. Okay, okay. thanks. Ma'am, also I can't see the notes on the class class classwork section. Ma'am, you're um, could you unmute? No. Mute too. Okay, sorry. Um, so um can you see any of the content that's posted in that classwork section, sister? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, are, are the rest of you able to see it? Yes. Yeah, it is available. Yes. Okay. Um, so, sister, let me just check. So, you're definitely in the class because you've been able to join this classroom right you're already um okay uh how did you get this link uh to the join google meet where did you see the link did you i'm not i'm, I'm logged in on my laptop and it's not there. okay but how did you get the link to this class uh, classroom. You, you went Cla to Google. Dot, yeah, classroom Google.com. Okay, so I think you looked at the link on the stream tab on the top. If you go to the classwork tab, can you see that? Uh, yeah, do you have no, classroom open? Yeah, yeah, I went there also, but I can't see. You can't see anything. Okay, uh, let's just work on that maybe during the break and we'll see. Um, I, I'll try and get somebody who can help you with that or should i log in again by um so all of this was posted a few days ago actually so uh if you're not seeing it uh, i'm not sure if you did you open it today or when did you open classroom today in the morning Okay, so we, all of that was posted a few days ago, so it should already be there. But I don't see you as one of the students on Classroom. I'm not sure if I'm uh, missing something. But if you were able to join this class, that means you're able to see what's being posted in the Classroom. So let me just, we'll try and uh, work on that maybe during the break. Okay. And we'll figure that out. Um, any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Christina, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, can you just give the reference of the letter that was written before First Corinthians? Again, I I missed it. Yeah, First Corinthians uh, 5. Let me also just go back to make sure I'm seeing the right reference. Um, let me just see. First Corinthians five nine. Okay, I, I think it's time for our break, so we'll just come back. Uh, Sister Rosalyn, I'll see if we can uh, figure out what the issue is. Thank you. So we'll be back at ten o'clock.